hi everybody. Uh, this hope I'm not too early or too late. The Shiflet Brothers Sculpting Forum. Um, hi, and uh, I hope you're uh, you're watching out there. Um, so, like I said, I'm I'm Jordi Shell, and I'm. Uh, we're going to do a few things today. I'm going to um, take you, of course, through a little tour of my studio, um, and I'm going to um, no sound. Somebody's saying, uh, "Got no sound." Shit. Can people not hear me? Is it just Paul Connor, or is nobody getting sound? Somebody let me know. Okay, so everybody else can hear me. Okay, well, it, uh, um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to uh, take you through uh, a bunch of things. Uh, you know, I've got an armature prepared, uh, and, um, I, of course, I'm going to take you through uh, my studio. Um, there's a, uh, you know, this, the art form that I do and that, that uh, I assume most of you do there on the forum uh, is very, very complex and it's, it's kind of um, a very personal thing, you know. Um, Everyone does it differently. You know, I've seen people work wonders with materials I don't think I'll ever really fully understand. Uh, you know, I know that the, my buddies, uh, the Shiflet brothers, use epoxy uh, for a lot of their sculptures. And, um, you know, and that's a very, uh, a very specific, uh, learned way of doing things. You know, I don't, I haven't really tried that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I mostly sculpt through adding and subtracting, uh, just like most of you guys with clay. I've never tried to do, uh, actual carving sculpture. You know, the, uh, the Renaissance masters did not consider what most of us do as, um, as sculpture, they considered it modeling, you know. Um, so, so, um, you know, they, they considered only actually carving plaster or marble or stone uh, actual sculpture. So, and when you see the results they were getting, you know, it does make you feel kind of small. My wife and I went to Italy uh, a few years ago and it was humbling to say the least you know needless to say in this industry you see a lot of egos flying around and um and i'm certainly not exempt you know i i've had my moments but uh when you when you go and see the renaissance uh master's work you know uh jean baptiste carpeau i guess he was a little after the renaissance but uh you know michelangelo bernini but all that stuff um, you know, you get a really good sense of uh, just how good or how not that great you are as an artist. So um, that's always an interesting thing. I highly recommend it, though. If you really want to get, uh, if you really want to get good, study study the masters and, and study anatomy as much as you can. I think that uh, you know understanding. Uh, the way that living things move and the way they work is uh, is really key to making convincing work. You know, I don't. Uh, I, I I think I, I love creating fantasy characters and creatures, but uh, where you where you really learn is when you're tasked with sculpting. Uh, the human form or an animal form that has to appear real. You know, uh, monsters always look 
pretty cool in movies. But it's when you see a fake head or a fake animal, um, you know, in a film that you can tell. Ooh, no. Because we see pigeons and dogs and kitty cats and, and people every day, you know. And, and to make those seem convincing uh, is, the, is the, one of the hardest things, I think. Um, but, um, you know, primarily, you know, what I do like doing the most is fantasy art. I like coming up with creatures and characters that could never exist, but, um, trying to make them seem as real as they can. And a lot of that, um, oh, one of my heroes, uh, Mark Newman is watching. Hi, Mark. Um... Uh, Mark Newman, by the way, is a guy you need to get on here. I would watch that in a heartbeat uh, to the shiflets and to the members watching now. Uh, Mark Newman is one of the greatest figurative sculptors I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and he does it really in tiny miniature. Um, anyway, but... Uh, hey, Mark. But, um, you know, I, I, I like fantasy... Uh, art of course the most and and if, while you can get away with a lot uh you really really have to consider the fact that if you're going to make your your creature or character convincing uh you really have to pay attention to the rules of anatomy and you have to pay attention to the rules of skin and coloration um you know there there are so many aspects you know uh one one of the big ones i'd really like to to get into your head uh is our areas of rest in creature design areas of rest are places on an animal uh that don't have much going on there aren't tentacles or spikes or weird textures they're just smooth areas like a spider. A spider's a really good example. You see all these, you know, little fingery legs and you, <clears throat> and there's mandibles and all the eyes and all that's right ahead of the thorax. And then in the back, the abdomen, you've just got this, this smooth, curving abdomen that has almost no shape to it. it, it I'm not shape, but no detail to it form wise it's just a smooth um form so you get a great contrast um with with all of those uh details and all those moving parts with that nice smooth area of rest as i call it meaning it's a place where your eye can rest <clears throat> and you're not um distracted by a billion fine little moving parts and details. So, uh, unfortunately, in a lot of uh, modern creature design, I see things that are just covered in detail. I see this a lot in video game work. Um, things that are just covered in detail and you can't really discern uh, a spot where your eye should focus, you know. Um, so, so areas of rest seem to be thrown out the door uh, in favor of just having a bunch of busy stuff going on all the time. And I, I just don't, I don't agree with that because it's not the way nature does it. To me, the crux of creating a convincing uh, monster, creature, alien, you know, whatever it is, are areas of rest. And it applies even to spaceship design, hardware design, guns, you name it. Design in general is about uh, having that wonderful contrast between a busy area and an area of rest, okay? Very important for good designing, all right? Um, why don't we, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna glue my armature in. I'm gonna finish posing it right now, and then, um, while that's setting, I'm going to uh, give you guys a little tour. How does that sound? So the first thing I want to do is go get my drill because I um, 
I didn't, I did, I'm walking out into the main area now. We have to be very quiet, because there are artists working here at the studio, and I don't want to disturb them. I'm just kidding. There are people working here, but I'm going to disturb them if I want, because I'm the boss. All right. Um, so I got my little handy drill here, and uh, uh, it's always so frustrating to try to remember what... Uh, I'm going to have to turn the camera down in here so I can see what I'm looking at. I think this ought to be about right. <clears throat> All right. Come on. Follow me. See, there's one of the artists right there. Um, is it okay if I mention you, sir? Sure. The artist's working... Uh, he really doesn't like to be filmed. He's just kind of shy, more, much more retiring than me. But uh, you'll see the shop, Mark. Calm down. We have time for everything. Uh, I'm going to be doing this for years on here. Uh, one of the guys that's working for me right now, I'm very pleased to have him, uh, is an artist named Matt Rose, uh, who is a considered one of the greatest sculptors this industry's ever had. He probably wouldn't like hearing that, but uh, he actually sculpted the head of the original Predator for the first film. Uh, he sculpted the creature from the Monster Squad with Steve Wang, and he and Steve Wang basically put their talents together. They were friends growing up in San Jose or somewhere up further north. And uh, Matt's doing some pretty incredible work for me, which I can't, unfortunately, show you because it's for a client. But uh, anyway, so here's the armature. It's a pretty wacky affair. Uh, but I'm going to just get this all drilled in here. So I use a pen to mark where I want the armature to sit, to stand. Ooh, that is a crap drill. Bit. pretty snug. That is an armature I made years and years ago, um, but uh, I just pulled it out of, I never did anything on it, and I just pulled it out of the, uh, my drawer full of half-used armatures and old sculpting stuff that I knew I wanted to get to, and this is what we have. So, Hope you guys like it. Hope it's good enough. Um, all right. Yes. Okay. Looks good. So I'm going to take DevCon five minute epoxy and I am going to take a one of these suckers here. One of these little wooden mixing sticks. So I've got a little specimen cup. And uh, I'm going to mix up the epoxy, mix it 50 50, you know, obviously. And after this, no worry, I will take you on a little tour of the studio and you'll get to see all kinds of crap. So. I usually like to mix up just a little more epoxy than I think I need. This looks like a decent amount. Just mix it up for about 30 seconds, maybe not even that long. But you wanna make sure it's thoroughly mixed so that it 
hardens properly. Okay. Okay, and now I'm just going to just pour it into the drill hole areas. I try to almost fill them. That way I know there's plenty in there. Almost done. Hope you guys all had a good uh, holiday. I went back to Philadelphia and saw some good friends and had some good Philadelphia food. I had that cheese steak, yo. That Philly cheese steak, man. You can't do without that. You know what I'm saying? Don't be doing no cheese. We're doing no trip to Philly without no cheesesteak. You know what I'm saying? Pizza too, yo. Pizza. Hello from Italy. See, that's what I'm talking about right there, man. My Italian friends is on here too. They all like, yeah, man, you had some pizza, did you? Yeah, it ain't as good as ours, though. That's what Italians say. It's probably true. All right. Now you can see that I've got quite I'm gonna flip the camera if I can so you can see that I've got a lot of excess glop hanging off the edge here that's fine what I usually do is just kind of goober it up on the on the armature I'm going to be using um, I'm going to be using Chavant to sculpt this um, and I hope I can get far enough. Well, as somebody else pointed out, that armature crazy, yo. It's got all kinds of like six arms and shit. Legs all crazy and shit. I've got some weird ideas in my head. Because I'm a weird man. But, uh, anyway, what you laugh about, Nomi Smith? Hell so funny. Are you related to Will Smith, though? Can you get me a part in the movie, though? All right. Already the epoxy is setting up. I'm going to cap up these containers. I'm going to put them back in their little cubby hole with a few other kinds of glue. Okay, so um, this in general is my little, so the, I mean generally, uh, you know, this, this right here, if I go to the, the, the door, this is the paint room, okay? So you can see some, some motherfuckers in there working. Yo, Marcel, look at the fucking camera, man, what's wrong with you? Um, Okay, so you can see some monster stuff. Oh, hello, this is the French, hello, I love your food. Yes, your desserts are wonderful. More Italy, more. If you look around the room, you can see some pieces that have to get painted up here. Um, including this guy here. This is for my boy Josh Wazzy Link, Nightmare Four. Okay, so we're gonna pan around. You can see the top. Sydney, Australia, Brazil. We've got all kinds of people in the house right now. Now this is my main station, but it's set up for uh, the camera when we get. So you can see my setup. I've got all my paint set up. I've got a cabinet and drawers full of all the stuff I need. I've got my airbrush here, along with a lot of other, um, you know, scrolling comments are covering up the bottom portion of the video screen. How do I get rid of that? Does anyone know how to get rid of that? If anyone can tell me, that would be great. Sorry about that. 
Um, ah, okay. I, I, I don't see it anymore. Um, you can see I've got a nice swing arm lamp here uh, that is also magnifying. Um, you can see all my colors. Here's where I keep most of my FW acrylic inks, which I use for a lot of airbrushing. I'll be happy to come back at some point and show you my paint uh, paint uh, process, which I know a lot of people ask about. Um, and here's essentials, specimen cups, stir sticks, brushes. Um, this is the flammable cabinet where we keep all of the dangerous shit. Look, jizz. I'm just kidding, but uh, we do keep alcohol in here, denatured alcohol, naphtha, lacquer thinner, terpenoid, rubber cement. Uh, you can see some goof off back there. All sad. Um, acetone, all that kind of junk, okay? Dragon's here, it's not a very good cop. Little miniature, ultra miniature characters I did. Here's a ghost woman. There's a little alien, yeti type character. Um, here's, you know, here's some old masks that I'm probably gonna be getting rid of. There's a very early Jordu right there. God, I was 16 or something. There's a Bill Nelson, an old shriveled up Savage Eye Man. And there's a Sleepy Troll. Uh, here's another mask that needs painting. One of my little demonic imp characters. Um, I can't show you everything. We've got to avoid a few things because some of it's for things that are still upcoming. We've got some monsters sitting around here. Old and dusty. Um, this is the main workshop. Uh, you know, uh, and there's there's an Ultraman I did for a company. You can sort of get a good idea of what it looks like. Again, I keep on this table stuff for my movie, which I know a lot of people are asking about. baby dragon. Alright, focus. I just want to focus on that baby dragon. Okay, now here, now this here, these are my, uh, my display cases. So, uh, there's stuff of all kinds in here. There are maquettes. And there's my assistant, Anna, coming in the door. Uh, there are monsters and maquettes aplenty in here. You're only going to get a glimpse of this one here on the, on the right-hand side of the screen. I don't want to show that one yet. That's for something special. Here are some characters and figures. Now, Jared emailed me earlier and said you gotta go real slow so people can really absorb everything they're seeing. You know, I wanna go as slow as I can, but at the same time, I also am aware that I have to get to... Um, these phones distort the hell out of sculpture. Uh, they all have this kind of fisheye lens aspect to them, which uh, makes it really difficult to get a good, everything looks like the head's about nine times too big and the body's a squinch. Uh, you know, the proportions are close and it looks like the head's ridiculous. Um, there's a little dragon monster. There's a snow beast demon there. Got some weird little man pointing off into the distance at something. Orin Warrior, an old mask I did a long time ago. Got some other maquettes up here. I'm sorry there's a glare, there's a reflection, but that is life. 
more masks, more mayhem. Okay, and then we stroll over here. We can see there's all kinds of other, there's Boris Karloff on the wall. And you can see some miniatures by my friend Michael Norman, who's an incredible talent. These little insect creatures. There's a little Chinese dog demon I did years ago. Here's a sculpture of me that someone did. Original formula Count Chocula cereal and a Distortions Unlimited catalog. Here are some zombie heads that I did for Sideshow. This, this head piece is on all goofy, but it, you take it off to reveal the brain. There's a beautiful um, Here's some more stuff from Andrew Kars. Uh, it's called Freedom of Teach, the company. Freedom of Teach or Anatomy Tools. Um, beautiful stuff here. These gorgeous skulls. Uh, Here's some other weirdness, weird characters that I had to create. There's an alien by a guy, a friend of mine named Jamie Biswarik down in New Zealand. He's an absolute genius. Got more mask nuttiness going on here. Some sort of bug-eyed alien. and We've got a literal bug-eyed alien here. And a horrific monstrosity here. Down here we've got uh, all kinds of creatures and maquettes and goofy characters. This is actually the first mask I ever made. I should probably keep it in better condition. <laughs> I think I was 15 when I did that. This is a sculpture by Craig Reardon uh, that was originally for Poltergeist, but it never got used. Here's a maquette of a character for something, and here's a clay press of the creature from the Black Lagoon head for the Monster Squad. Here's something that was going to be in my movie. You're seeing exclusively for the first time here. Not to actually put it in. Um, <clears throat> for various reasons. It's all in parts now. I'm probably going to have it cast someday. Look at that. Okay. Let's go over here. There's a lot of stuff getting worked on in the center of the shop, but most of that I can't really show you in detail. Here's a suit for something which I can't really show you. And there's an old mask of mine. Here's uh, there's uh, the professor from uh, uh, oh god, what's that show called? Anna. Huh? What's that show? Futurama. Oh. <laughs> Futurama. I sculpted as a design for a live action thing someone did. There's a piece I think I did with the Shiflet Brothers. I think they gave me the armature and I sculpted that over it or something. Um, here's another alien head and there's some monsters in the background in crazy positions. More aliens. There's Zoidberg from Futurama. Up top we got... Uh, We've got more monstrosities and masks and characters. Down here, we've got uh, maquettes of go go. Again, sorry about the glare, man. It's just the way it is. There's a head. There's a big, crazy gladiator monster. This is my maquette, my finished maquette for. Uh, Doomsday from Superman vs. Batman. Very little of the work, though, that I have in the studio uh, is from movies. It's almost all stuff that I did on my own. Usually mostly because it's owned by other people. Um, we can go over. There's Michael Norman working his ass off. Uh, this is a mask I did, uh, a facial study of... Neytiri from Avatar, way back in the day. Snarly werewolf. Always sunny in Philadelphia. More little things by Michael Norman. Um, 
some stuff by uh, Paul Komoda. So many talented artists. I think I have pieces by uh, Carlos Juante. Uh, there's another little study of Doomsday. And there's a beautiful uh, creature, a realistic um, caterpillar done by Paul Komoda. Now this guy, this guy, um, God, is he from Brazil or where is he from? He sculpts these things miniature, that scale, I mean real small, look at that, in Sculpey. I mean, look at some of the detail here. It's just mind boggling, mind boggling. And this, one of my prized possessions, is Astronaut. Uh, by Toy Ogunyoku, who is one of the greatest uh, miniaturists I know. I mean, just everything about that thing is just stunning. Just the pose, the weight, the beautiful sculpted face in there. It's just mind boggling. It's all sculpted. None of it's printed out or done with silly computer shit. It's real stuff. Same with this. Look at this incredible Galactus that a guy does. He does these things out of Sculpey, these tiny little things. And look, it's a masterful little Shiflet Brothers piece sitting here on my shelf. We've got uh, more stuff by Jamie Biswark. Got an awesome little zombie by Michael Norman thrown in there. Some alien work. Cool stuff by Takeyuka Takea, who's one of the greats. All right, we're gonna have to end this portion soon because there's a lot of studio to see, guys. I, I know you uh, you want to see it all, but I, I don't know if I'll be able to show you all of it. Um, this is the library, not the library. This is the conference room, the conference room. So here is where I confer and beg people for money. Um, this is uh, the conference table. I burned this uh, this insect into this conference table because I wanted a more interesting looking table. Uh, you can see some of my old mask collection there. Uh, art by various great artists. Uh, there's Julie Bell, and there's Boris Vallejo, and there's Alan Williams, James Jean on the end. Now this is the this is the big case of maquettes here. Um, so there are maquettes in here from a lot of movies and a lot of crap, uh, a lot of failed video games and all kinds of things. Um, here's a Dada, which is a monster from um, Ultraman. We've got something from that terrible movie. What was that thing called? Uh, the Rest in Peace Division, RIPD. Uh, here's a maquette of a werewolf type character uh, from a failed video game. Um, here are some Predator dog designs that weren't used for the most recent Predator movie. Whoo, what a hit that was. Um, there's a cartoony character and there's all kinds of monsters in here. There's a kind of more playful character. I like doing whimsical stuff every now and then. This was for a uh, a movie. Here's a creepy sort of specter. These swirling figures coming out around him. And there's a weird little character of his own. Monsters, monsters, monsters. There's a finished little caterpillar creature. More weird kind of predator stuff. Dude with a gun. A weird monster astride somebody. A piece uh, that I did for Todd Shore. A little gnome character. Not a little gnome character, a little gnome character. Um, again, another color sculpey monster with translucent teeth and ears uh, a character from a long time ago this is like 1998 or something a werewolf 
See how the camera makes the head look gigantic though? Ugh, I hate that. Here are some Predator designs uh, that were completely disregarded by the director. Um, Cause uh, I don't know, he, he just uh, did not like the designs. This is a, a, a Predator dog idea. They ended up, it looked like they stuck a Predator head on a dog body from the movie. So there you go, that shows uh, the deep thinkers of Hollywood for you. There's another monster. There's another little alien creature that was going to be in the new Predator film, but they changed the ending completely. Uh, a ghastly apparition for a TV show. Um, again, the head looks too big when you look at it real close, but more werewolf nonsense. A concept for a 2001 piece I want to do someday. More horrific madness. All down the bottom, another predator. This one sculpted by Matt Rose. More weird creatures, aliens. An E.T. An E.T. bust I did. Um, my own original alien design I wanted to do for a collector. Um, a Tom Cruise likeness that I haven't finished. Another likeness back there. A maquette that I did for a scan to make a life-size darkness from Legend for a collector. And there's... More amazing artwork here. You can see the TV is kind of shadowing some of this stuff, but here's some fantasy art by Michael Whalen and John Harris and so many talented artists. So that's what you're seeing here is the total of the uh, the what I call it the conference room. As we walk down the hall, there's art to be seen. Here's the men's bathroom. There's an original uh, by Mike Hill of a wolf man. If you turn on the lights, you can, woohoo, look at that. Isn't that fun? Look who's on the inside of the men's bathroom. we come in here we can see artwork lining the walls all kinds of different arts I'm sorry if I'm going too fast but we do have a lot of things to get to guys this is the women's who would be on the inside of the women's restroom let's take a look shall we oh it's Hanson really come on Julia what are you doing these ladies all right in here is the library so this is where uh, a great deal of my insect collection is. And of course, my book collection. Books, 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 and more books. Here's a beautiful piece by my friend, uh, Elena. Alina, sorry. Skull collection. Um, books, periodicals. A huge insect sculpted by somebody, I don't even know who. Books, 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 and more books. So that's the library. Through here, more fantasy artists. Uh, Despain, Mark Zug. You know, this is our little kitchenette. Alphabet cereal. More monsters, more Michael Whalen, some Miles Tevis thrown in there for you. Um, artists of all kinds. The great Frank Frazetta, Phil Hale, J. 
James Hoag. There's one by me from a long time ago. Carlo Arellano. Some movie poster stuff. An original by Bernie Wrightson. Rest in peace, buddy. He's a good friend of mine. Look at that beautiful thing. Look at that. Dawn of the Dead. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Bah! Anyway, okay. Um, there's a, an original by Boris. Awesome. There's some cool shit. An original by Julie Bell there. And still more, Frank Frazetta. And... Joe, uh, Joe Pepe, Michael Whalen again, another Alan Williams piece, MC Wolfman kicking ass, Carl Arellano, Mark Zug, another piece by me from years and years ago. It's one of the first acrylic paintings I did, I think. I have outlines of monsters all over the shop. Some more Michael Whalen. There's the White Dragon from Anne McCaffrey's famous book series. Another one by me. That's Tevis. This is the uh, this is the mold storage area. So this is where I store all the junk that I uh, that I don't uh, particularly need at the moment. But it's good to have it all on site. Uh, so that if we do need something, we can just come back here and grab it. You can even see some maquettes way up there. And some old masks. And... Okay, so that's the mold storage area. And finally in here, we have the office where there are still so many monsters that they cannot be contained. They overflow right into the work area. This is a piece that has to get shipped out to a guy in Canada, but we can't figure out how to get there. It's so expensive. Um, here's a classical piece of sculpture called The Bride, which I always thought was amazing. There's so much cool stuff to show. Here's a dragon I started for Weta the Hobbit that never finished. Um, here's an article about me that was in Makeup Artist Magazine that they sent me this printed up version of. Here's my my studio logo. There's my fat ass in this article I was telling you about. Monsters all over the table. Some old some new, some weird, some blue. Look at that. Monsters everywhere. Old masks from Don Post. Here's an early mask of mine. Ew, that sucks, Jordan. How did you do that so badly? <coughs> Here's a bunch of old stuff. There's a beautiful mask by Norman Cabrera that I have to paint. Um, there's McFuture. A beautiful mask. I love this design. Um, it's an awesome head. Um, there's stuff for sale. There's my miniature busts and some of my monster masks that I sell and some of my t-shirts. and An old monster that needs some help. More mold storage. Masks, masks, masks. All kinds of different artists here. Many different artists represented. Here's one in mid paint. You can see it needs to be finished. Um, old junky storage. Old masks sitting around. Molds. More artists and art. <coughs> Look at that. Arguably the greatest album cover art of all time. Blues for Allah, The Grateful Dead. Um... There's an original by Todd Shore, which 
just falling out of its frame. That's nice. Let's get that on the film. Let everyone know how pathetically bad I am at keeping art. Look at what's on our desktop. Um, here's a beautiful drawing by somebody uh, from Sideshow, of all things. There's an old painting of mine. And here's a really tiny little painting of a chimpanzee I did years ago. And that about wraps it up for taking a tour of the studio, guys. Um, I hope that was slow enough, you know. I do what I can, okay? We're gonna start turning off lights as we go. <sighs> Scared yet. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys can turn on the big lights now. I'm done with the tour. You know how you know when a dog is healthy? The nose is cold and wet. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, could you, uh, Marcel, could you bring me the clay, yes. the hot clay? And we're gonna get started. By now, uh, it should be pretty strong in here. It looks like it's pretty good. And uh, we're gonna get going on actually doing some sculpting work. For a second, I'm going to just click back. Um, at just some of the. Uh, well, you have to remember, if someone says, do you ever sleep? Well, the thing is that I've, uh, I've been doing this stuff for a long, long time. And this is the, the collection of it all. Um, okay, so in order for people to, um, in order for everyone to be able to see what's going on, I'm going to have to swipe comments to the side. I'm gonna plug it in so that my phone is getting juice. And now we're all set, okay? Um, hopefully everyone can see that well enough. What time is it, Anna? It's 10 to four. Okay, perfect. So when I start a sculpture, I usually take, you know, I've got warmed up Chavant clay here. I usually start adding it in very thin amounts onto the armature. So there's just a thin coating. I wonder what would happen if I put this up here. Is that better? That sure looks better. Okay, it makes it eye level for me, it makes it eye level for you. You guys can see it better, blah, blah, everyone's happy. Marcel. Do you find yourself without something to do, sir? Uh, at the moment, yes. You find yourself without something to do. Okay. Well, I'd propose that you finish pouring up that little gray stoke head, yes? I already got that done. Well, then it should be removed, shouldn't it? Gotta get more plaster bandages and I can finish the vacuum, right? Use just hydrocal. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm sorry, I have to manage while doing this. Um, okay. Um, Anna? Anna! Get over Is there some way for you to, on your phone, ask, f find where I'm live and see the comments that are coming in? Oh, yeah. I can do that. You've got to go to the ship. Let's go. I hope you don't have to be a member. I don't, I don't know. Because that way people can see the full screen and... It's going on right now on the Shiflet Brothers Sculpting Forum. Is it on Facebook? It was on Facebook. How do you spell the name? S H I F F Shiflet Brothers Sculpture Forum, I think. Okay, so already I'm trying to establish some aspects of the anatomy. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to try to answer some of your questions as they come in. Uh, Anna's going to grab a chair maybe and Anna's going to get a chair to relax herself in while she asks me some of the questions you might have for me. Were you worried that your video had frozen? Were you? All right, she gonna shoot now. What do you want to know, huh? Nobody want to know nothing. Yes, take the volume off. We get the feedback, eh? Uh, Jason wants to know the difference between Siobhan and Sculpey. Uh, well, Sculpey is a polymer clay. Uh, that bakes in the oven to get hard. Shivant is an oil-based clay that stays uh, soft forever, permanently. Scott wants to know why, how are you so awesome? Well, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, subjective question. I, you know, I think there's plenty of people who don't think I'm awesome at all. Someone wants to know what's the gray stuff in the torso. Oh, that was a that's epoxy putty. I'm sorry. This is epoxy putty that just helps to kind of get all these pieces of armature wire smooshed together, basically. Nothing uh nothing big there. Someone wants to know if you are basing that piece on a drawing. I'm not basing this on anything. It's just an old armature I had that had a bunch of stuff sticking out of it. So I'm just kind of winging it. I have no idea what it'll end up looking like. So bear with me. It might suck. It might be an embarrassment. I don't know. Someone wants to know when you're done with the sculpture, how you protect it from getting messed up. Well, you can either mold a piece 
if it gets messed up, or you can um, read their name too when you tell me. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you can either mold a piece and, and make it, you know, permanent that way, or, you know, you can just keep it in cabinets, glass cabinets, like I do in my uh, conference room. <coughs> Harva wants to know what method Ooh. you Harva, what method you use to keep your Siobhan pliable. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you keep you got to keep it wrapped until you want to use it. You know, that's, that's part of it. Um, I'm not quite quite sure what the question means. Um, you know, you've got to heat it up. I've got a little tiny convection oven that's a hot air oven that basically uh, makes the, the Chavant nice and malleable. Jonathan wants to know if you ever use texture uh, stamps on Chavant sculptures because it's hard. I don't tend to use it too often on Chavant sculptures, it, it, again, like you just said, uh, read their whole name too. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it usually is too difficult. I think you can probably do it if you use a hair dryer to kind of soften the surface of the clay just a little tiny bit. Um, you know, but, but it's, uh, texture stamps are really for, for water clay sculptures and, and Sculpey maybe and stuff like that that's really soft. Gregory here wants to know what's the purpose of wrapping the armature in spiral wire? Uh, so that the clay has something to grab onto. Otherwise, it might tend to slide around on the armature, you know. The, the, this, the fine wire wrapped around really helps to grip, have some, some tooth to it. I'm sorry if I pronounce things wrong. Uh, Ryo wants to know how much of a gap is there between what you imagine and what actually comes out? Mm, that's a really good question. No one's ever asked me that question. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I think that uh, luckily for me, things usually end up looking a little better than I had imagined. Um... But it's hard to say the percentage or, you know, but there is a difference. It's really true. Sometimes they don't turn out as well as I'd imagined, and I realize I just can't make the piece work, you know. That's always very frustrating, so. <laughs> Zachary Robert wants to know if you ever use monster clay. I don't really use monster clay. I know that it's very popular among sculptors. Um... But it, it's it's a little too uh, waxy for my taste. Dina Sandy wants to know what percentage of time you use your hands as opposed to using tools. Well, tools are probably used more in terms of the amount of time simply because tools are necessary to refine the piece. However, any good sculptor will tell you that uh, your hands do all the really heavy lifting in terms of establishing uh, a character. You know, you can't really um, establish a character when you're working with tools. It would be like trying to, to start a painting of a huge sky <coughs> with, a, with a tiny little air, tiny little paintbrush like this. You want to take a huge brush and swath across uh, the canvas. Well, that, the same thing applies to sculpture. Uh, you want to be able to use, uh, you know, the biggest brush you've got, and that's your hands. And you'd be surprised how much gets done with just your hands. I'm basically not going to get into much tool work at all, um, if any at all, on this piece, because I want to, to show you guys how important it is to just establish the whole thing with your hands. You know, the tools are only for refining. I'm going to be able to do everything I need to do um, with my hands, you know? 
your junk wants to know at what temperature do you warm the clay? Uh, I can't quite remember what the oven set at. It's probably at about 120 degrees, maybe. What do you think, Anna? I think it's somewhere around there. Uh, I can check in a minute. Um, probably about 120 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere. Byron Taylor wants to know why Chavant over Roma Plastilina. Uh, Roma Plastilina has become very kind of inconsistent over the years. And it also smells extreme uh, because it has sulfur in it. Um, <clears throat> so you'll find me using Chavant a lot more nowadays. In fact, most people tend to use Chavant more than Roma Plastilina these days. Although Roma is still a very nice medium. You know, it's very creamy and smooth and, you know, it's, it's a beautiful medium. It's just, it's not quite as reliable in terms of its consistency as it used to be. And it really smells terrible. Also, with Chavant, you have the opportunity to use, um, to, for, for molding, you have the opportunity to use platinum-based silicones to mold because there's no sulfur in it. Platinum silicones hate sulfur. So if you use, um, if you try to make a platinum mold of a latex mask, which has a lot of sulfur in it, or an Roma Plastilina sculpture, the material would never set up because it just rejects uh, sulfur. Uh, Paul Jones wants to know if you have any specific books you like for anatomy, human or animal. Uh, yeah, my, my favorite anatomy book um, is by, um, oh, Matt has it on the table over there, damn it. It's called Atlas of Human Anatomy. Um, dang. Matt? Who who wrote uh, Atlas of Human Anatomy? Goldfinger. No. Uh, Atlas. Oh, Peck. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yeah, is it Roger Peck? The black cover. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Roger Peck, isn't it? I thought you had it on your table. It it's Roger Peck. It's Roger Peck. Um. So there you go. Yeah. That's 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 um, that one. Rogerio Borges wants to know if you use X3 clay. No, that's that wax stuff. Um, and it's supposedly really great. I just haven't really gotten into using it. I've seen the incredible results that this guy Adam Bean gets, though. I mean, he created it. Great looking stuff. I just haven't really used it. David Falchuk uh, asks if, in this age of computer-generated special effects, do you feel like there's still a need for sculptors in the movie industry anymore? Uh, there probably isn't much of a need for us anymore. I, I get fewer and fewer calls to do movie work. Um, you know, and, and there, there is an agenda, I do find. There's a, a major agenda by digital people to... Um, you know, let the world know that, you know, what they do is more, uh, I don't know, more with it and more with the times and, and that this antiquated way that things were done is kind of the province of snobs now, which I don't, I don't really like that attitude, but I see it increasingly, um, you know, I, I you know, I, I mean, I, I have, I have, friends who do this digital work too and you know they used to do sometimes by the way I'll lift <laughs> I'll lift parts of the armature out of the way to uh, to get to what's underneath um, I mean you know I, I, I think the best special effects that are done are combinations of practical work and digital work but that's special effects in terms of design I can see why so many people prefer um, you know digital uh, because it's fast and easy. Me personally, I'm always more impressed when I see practical work. When I know that someone actually 
did it the old fashioned way and they actually sculpted it or drew it or painted it in actual material, you know, and that, that there's an original there. You know, one of the drawbacks to digital art is there's no real original, there's no one of. It's just, you can make prints, you can print it out, and blah, you know, and there's no business of genuine art anymore because there's no original there. You know what I'm saying? Rizaldi is letter wants to know is letter. Oh, okay. How do you preserve your non-drying sculptures and prepare them for painting if you decide not to mold and cast them? Well, honestly, with Shavant, you can paint right on it. You can do exactly what you want <coughs> right on the piece. Uh, I just go right in with acrylic once it's all finished. I've got plenty of pieces that uh, are like that in my uh, in my case. Pat Jackson wants to know, can you make a plaster mold with Siobhan for casting porcelain? Uh, probably. I've certainly never done that. It's a little out of my wheelhouse to answer, but I would imagine, you know. Jonathan North asks, when you teach classes in different countries, do you find the students very different? Um, believe it or not, I got to say no. Mo most students genuinely really want to learn. <clears throat> um, you know, sometimes there are a few pain in the asses. What's different are my hosts. Uh, the hosts can be anywhere from extremely grateful to have you there and are extremely accommodating to completely rude some have ripped me off money some have treated me like i was doing they were doing me a favor you know so it's the hosts i find that change not the students sometimes the students you know there are all kinds of people in the world and some people think they know it all and <clears throat> you know they they act accordingly but um generally speaking you know i find that uh most of the time, students are pretty darn respectful, you know, they really are. Mark Holliam wants to know, how did you find the experience of making your own short film and where they can buy it or watch it? Well, you'll be able to buy it and watch it when it's friggin' done. Right now, it's, 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 there are so many steps going on with it and there's so much involved it boggles the mind I I had no idea it was so involved and, and the number of people that the, the, the kinds of people that I wanted to have involved in it uh, are really really major artists and, and so much of what is going on is waiting on their schedule you know and their availability um, it's, you know, it will be done for sure this year, probably in the early part of the year, but, you know, it's still got a ways to go uh, with, with adding some compositing work, and it's got to be scored, and it's got to be, uh, the, the, the color timing has to be, you know, so there's still a lot to do, but um, I'm, I'm actually really excited about it. It was an amazing experience to do. Scott Robinson wants to know what do you recommend to improve speed and quality? Uh, well, I wouldn't worry about speed as much as just improving quality. You know, I, I think um, I think just concentrating on anatomy and learning to homogenize your designs, you know, making them feel like they, they make sense in the world. That's really where it, where it's all, where it really comes together, you know. Cindy DeGraw wants to know, how did you securely attach the armature to the base? Um, hold on a second. Uh, Okay, I covered that earlier. I drilled a hole in here, and then I used five-minute epoxy to, 
to to put in the hole, and then I sunk the armature, which is a little longer than the feet, into there completely. And then let that set. Uh, Bashiri J. Jones wants to know, dreadful as remakes may be, if there was one movie you could remake and work on, what would it be? Hmm. That's an interesting question. You know, I've always been a fan of the idea of taking a really bad film, like Plan 9 from Outer Space or, you know, Robot Monster, and making it incredible, like turning it into like this unbelievable odyssey of horror and science fiction. Um... You know, why take a great movie, uh, you know, like The Day the Earth Stood Still or This Island Earth and, and remake that. Remake something that was just absolute garbage to begin with that everyone knows is kind of silly and turn it on its head. Can you imagine a really upsetting remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space? I mean, that would be incredible. Just take it and just completely wipe out all, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> previously held ideas about it. To me, that would be a hoot. I don't know. Benny Walnuts wants to know since Benny Walnuts. Yes, Walnuts. Hey, how you doing there, Benny Walnuts? What are you doing over there? <laughs> since when do you do this professionally? And a little of the story of how everything started. <clears throat> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I got my start in 1988 or 9, 89, I guess. Um, I was asked to come out here by an effects artist to do some work on a movie, and uh, I was lucky. You know, I got lucky and and uh, became fairly well known as an artist, and I'm just, I feel very fortunate, you know. Now you guys can see how this is starting to take shape. And you can see some sense of anatomy and some weird bugginess coming through. Um, Janet Bryant wants to know, uh, he says, I saw sculpture with sculpted genitals. Is there any censorship in this area for commercial work? Wait, say again? I saw a sculpture with sculpted genitals. Is there any censorship in this area for commercial work? Um, <clears throat> there probably is. I mean, I, you know, if, if you're doing fine art, like for a gallery or something, probably not. Probably, in fact, the more outrageous, the better. I mean, in movies, you know, you're not going to see big dongs hanging out all over the place um, on monsters unless it's going to be some kind of weird art house nonsense. It's rated NC-17, you know. Gina Sandy wants to know if you have an in innovative way to study unique characters. Do I have an innovative way? Mm -hmm. Um... Not really. I mean, I just observe as much as the next person. Um, but I, I do find that I find myself studying people's faces, you know, uh, of all kinds. I'm, I'm fascinated by how different we all look within the confines of two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Um, but yeah. George Jung wants to know if you plan to bring more sculpting stuff like you did for Norman or Stan Winston School DVDs, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's in the future at some point. You know, I. The hard part is finding the time. You know, finding the time to, to sit down and 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 just do it, and then, pay someone to edit it and and all that kind of thing. So. You know, obviously, you know, I want to get as much stuff out there to people and, and help them to learn more and more. Um, 
but it does seem as if uh, it takes a great deal of time and money to do those things because you've got to you do have to pay people to to help you out um someone's got to film it someone's got to edit it someone's got to do graphics you know it's a big big thing you know ken clark wants to know what hardness is this clay this is nsp medium non-sulfur plastiline medium Holster wants to know what's your favorite likeness that you have done. Well, I mean, I guess I'm particularly proud of the Harrison Ford as Han Solo that I did, um, just because his likeness is legendary for being really hard to get. Um, I waited through about a billion really terrible likenesses of him that people had done toys and figures and all kinds of things. Um, just trying to, just trying to find out what, what, what seemed to be the difficulty. And, you know, I just, it took a long time to get it right months, but I, I finally feel like I got it pretty damn close. So I'm fairly proud of this. You know? Jonathan North wants to know if you still like Banoffee pie. Yes, of course. I still love Banoffee pie. <laughs> Cool smite. <laughs> Janet Raya wants to know, are there any sculptors that make you feel like you should try harder? Well, I mean, most of them that are really good, you know, I, I mean, there, there are so many sculptors that are better than me. There really are. I mean, I... I'm sort of incredulous that people want to watch me do this crap because it's like, and I'm not being falsely modest. I, I really don't understand how I've become known as one of the really good ones. I, I think I'm really good at it, but I don't think, like, I, I don't know. I would not want to watch this. <laughs> this is just kind of boring to me. But, um, I mean, there are plenty of artists, you know, that are just so... Um, I think what I what I admire the most in an artist is the um, the ability to work on things regardless of what they are and put the same amount of effort into them. That's always very impressive to me. Uh, a guy named Steve Wang comes to mind, or my friend Steve. He, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what he's working on. He will give it the same care that he would give to sculpting a cool monster. And he's great at monsters. Great at, he probably enjoys sculpting monsters the most, but you wouldn't know that looking at his work. It just he he you know, will do it to the very highest level of quality uh regardless of what it is, you know, and, and to me that's an extremely admirable trait and one that I I just don't share. If I'm not if I'm not into it, ooh, that's it. I, I, I cannot get into it. You know. Clay Mac wants to know, do you have any interest in making statues in sixth, fifth, or quarter scale, like slideshow collectibles, or even doing some stuff for companies like Slideshow? I think you mean sideshow. Oh, sideshow. Yeah. But I like slideshow because it's sort of like <laughs> slideshow. I don't know why I put that L in there. Well, because there isn't such a thing as a slideshow. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I've done stuff for these companies, collectible companies, and you know, <clears throat> it's always fun when when you're given <clears throat> something that that allows you some some freedom, you know, some creative freedom. Um. And I do have some stuff I'm going to be releasing myself. Um, by the way, I'm going to start anatomically detailing this side. So you're going to see me kind of leaving all this sort of rough in favor because of, only because of time. But I'm going to start getting specific on this side with anatomical detailing. Carlito Brigante wants to know... Carlito Brigante. Carlito. 
He wants to know if you use still still use reference for certain parts. Well, yeah, I mean, reference is a necessary thing. Um, I use reference for for things that I haven't sculpted before. You know, like a weird lace collar, or, you know, things like that. Um, certain kinds of skin or faces. Um, if I have to sculpt an absolutely realistic dog or cat or a likeness, of course, you know, you have to have reference. Faith Chavez wants to know, what's the biggest mistake you've made recently with a sculpture? Do you still have goof-offs sometimes? Um... Honestly, I, I, it's not like I have too many mistakes sculpturally, but a lot of things go wrong technically, you know, when it comes to molding and casting and, you know, there's all kinds of unforeseen things that can happen. Um, and that's always a drag, you know, it's always hanging over your head uh, what what might go wrong or, you know, what's the right... Yeah, what's what's the right material to use for this thing, or you know? Patrick Matthews wants to know. Yo, Patrick, man, what's up? Which are the most valuable lessons you learned by teaching? Um, that you can learn from your students. You know, you can actually learn from your students. You can steal from them and claim the work as your own. Um, give them no credit and have them die penniless and homeless while you're riding high in a Bentley. <laughs> no, I mean, it's that you can learn, you know, from anybody, and anyone can teach you something, you know. Chris Thompson wants to know, what's the largest piece you've worked on? Probably something for Distortions Unlimited in Colorado. Um, you know, I've, I've done so many crazy things for them. Uh, Patty Honeybee wants to know. Well, no, she's saying, we watch you because you make them come alive under your fingers. It doesn't take you long to make legs, muscles, and even kneecaps. Definitely not boring to watch. And let's see. And Janet Bryo says, not a question, but your art collection must be a great source of inspiration. Well, yes, it is. And, and in fact, the, one of the things that inspires me the most are other artists. You know, I, I think that uh, there's nothing more exciting than discovering a new artist that that's just mind-blowing and approaches things in a way you never did um, or just has a vision that you've never foreseen you know I, I think that's uh, always really really exciting Gary Alt says Alien 3 is on my TV at the moment it's been a long time since some really iconic monsters have rocked up in movies is there any that you regard as on that level in the last 10 years? Like Alien? <clears throat> <clears throat> no. Of course not. I don't, I don't really think that there's ever going to be anything that rivals Alien in terms of redefining the look of science fiction like that. I mean, Alien was a seismic <clears throat> leap ahead in terms of design for film you know and uh, no I mean there's been a lot of really cool stuff but Alien get out of here that's, that's, that's on a level way beyond anything anyone was even thinking about in 1979 and no one's matched it in all the sequels you know, I mean, I, I worked on one of them, and I thought what we did was pretty bad compared to what the original looked like. Brad Hicks wants to know, do you still work with Ed and the gang in Greeley, Colorado? Of course. In fact, I am <clears throat> probably going there fairly soon uh, to do some stuff, so 
Oh yeah, no, Ed's a really good friend. And I do stuff with him all the time. Stephen Hickman says... You mentioned Stephen Hickman? Yes. Stephen Hickman is a legendary fantasy artist. Legendary. One of the awesome. best. And a great sculptor. <laughs> great sculptor. He says, you mentioned personal projects coming up. Can you tell us about any <clears throat> of those? Well, I could, but you know I'd have to harm you horribly. Um, well, I mean, the personal project stuff is usually the stuff I am most cagey about talking about. Um, <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you give me a call sometime, Stephen, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what I've got going on. You came up recently in a conversation I was having with Michael Whalen, actually, in a very positive light, sir. Brian Handyside says, do you make a mold to reproduce all your pieces? No, I, I really don't um, make molds often, unless it's something I really, really like, I think is really, really worth it. <coughs> in a second, I'm going to have you swap out uh, mm -hmm. these and put this back in the oven and Okay. Twist the dial all the way back around so that it's still going. Okay. In fact, do that now. I'm waiting for that. Okay. Questions and hold. All right. Sorry, my wife called me. I'll have to call her back later. Janet Ryo asks, is it better to be the best artist in a world of fairly lame art or an average skilled sculptor in a world of genius sculptors? <laughs> I don't know. That's a philosophical question. I, I you know. Uh, I would think it would be better to be average in a land of of greatness because you are constantly inspired what good is being great if <clears throat> you know the rest of the people suck i yeah I, I would i'd have to go with the the latter on that i suppose you know it's really good to be the best among great genius no I'm, i don't know <laughs> vague satan wants to know who was the last artist that you found inspiring? Uh, <laughs> well, I found this guy recently on Instagram who's some, I think he's from Russia, and he does, God, what is his name? He begins with an O, but he does some of the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so creepy. And uh, it's just so dark and, and haunting and weird. Sandra Lira wants to know if you can show them your favorite tools for small detail later. Uh, yeah, I suppose I can. Um, for right now, I'm just, I want to concentrate on trying to get this as far along as I can. In the time we've got allotted. Harva yeah. says that uh, there's rumors about Colorado being a special effects hotspot. What? That if it's true, or if you've heard anything about that. I have never heard about Colorado being a special effects. Upcoming. I, no. <laughs> I mean, I know there are some companies there, but hotspot? No. I, 
I don't I don't think so. Kevin Veganovic wants to know what type of oven are you using to heat the clay? It's a convection oven. Um kind of a basic thing. I got it I got it a convection oven means a hot air oven. Um I got it at uh I got it at a restaurant supply place. Kristen Hagberg says, certain artists seem to shift towards certain animals for inspiration. I'm guessing you like to base your work on insects? Well, I mean, I like, I like uh, all kinds of animals. I've done bird monsters and lizard monsters and human-based monsters and all kinds of stuff. So I don't know that I, I you know, I, I think insects are particularly disturbing. The idea of them being large and is a very disturbing idea. But I don't know if I if I particularly am sweet on insects. You know, crustaceans, there's all kinds of cool shit. Um, Ty Ackenbach says, I heard Ed used to mess with your sculpts and change them. Typical Ed. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, Ed, Ed, uh, you know, we don't always agree on exactly the direction something should go. I, you know, it's his business. He can do what he wants. Doesn't bother me that much. RJ7 says, what movies, video games, card games, tabletop games, and so on, there's more fantasy character and creature design being done now than ever. Has this watered down the art of creature design and made innovation more challenging? Yes, in a word. It's made it very challenging. Fantasy art is no longer really exciting like it used to be because there, you know, everybody does it now, it seems. Um, there's so much interest in it. And, uh, you know, it's just no longer the kind of um, unusual art form it used to be. Because it seems like everybody is kind of into it and, and wants to work at some game company or some junk. And it's just like, to be a fantasy artist is not an exciting thing anymore. It's cool, but it's not, it's just not what it used to be. You know? It used to be really ultra and strange and, ooh, wow, that's what you do for a living? Now it's like, oh yeah, I saw that on TV. I know what you do. I get it. It's like plumbing or something, you know. You'll notice when I create joints like this, I make them very, very sharp. I like to create a real high point where the joint is. I like to create a real sharp area where that joint is gonna be. See that? It, it gives it a whole lot of life. Just so everyone knows, when a lot of people write at the same time, I don't have access to the previous questions anymore, so I'm sorry if I skip someone that happens sometimes. I cannot do anything about that. Let's see. Um, Mark Davidson says, it makes me angry when people comment on my art and dismiss it as a gift, but I had to work hard to get where I am, and that is miles away from you. Do you ever feel that way? Uh, do I ever feel insulted that people say that sort of thing? Of course. I mean, if you're, a, if you're an artist, a real artist, not just some 
you know, jerk trying to make money at, at pretending. If you're a real artist and it comes from your soul, you're going to endure a billion insults in your lifetime. You're going to endure uh, people claiming you ripped them off. You're going to endure people saying you're not that good. You're going to endure people saying, oh, wow, I wanted to do what you could do. What, what, I, I wanted to do what you do, but, you know, it just seemed like, you know, it was just, it was just not a smart move or, you know, wow, you must feel like you're having fun all day. and You know what I mean? It's, the, the, these kind of insults crop up on a, on, a, on a daily basis almost. You know, people always are going to be dismissive. Some people are always going to be dismissive of art. It's just the way it is. Um, and it's not, it's not uh, a sexy look. It really annoys me, but, you know, it, it's part of being an artist and it hurts us, it wounds us because art's an intensely personal thing, which is why in a way the term commercial art is an oxymoron, isn't it? Because how can it be art if it's not coming from the soul? How is that art? It can't be, you know? So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of nonsense like that. People are always going to have some horseshit opinion about it. and They're always going to feel like they just have to tell you. Some guy came in here once with his girlfriend. And I don't know whether he felt insecure or threatened by all the art or whatever. Because his girlfriend was really into it. <clears throat> but he said, so uh, is this your shtick? You, you make monsters and junk like that? Just had this sort of like, is that your shtick? He literally said, your shtick. And I said, well, it's not a shtick. It's something I've honed over many, many decades to perfect. And, you know. But I mean, you're going to endure people like that all the time. It never, doesn't matter what level of the craft you've reached. There's always going to be someone there ready to insult Always. Karen Wimpy asks, have you ever struggled with being a perfectionist to the point where it's hard to be satisfied with what you've done? Well, you know, I mean, I'm never fully satisfied, but luckily I don't get so stuck on being a perfectionist that I don't get anything done. There are artists I know that, that are so... It's so important for every last little thing to be thought of that they actually never get a piece finished. And that's, that's a problem. You know, you have to, to be able to get the work actually done. You know, you can't, uh, you can't spend all your time worrying about its perfection or not. At some point, you know, even your own personal work has to get completed. Faith Chavez wants to know, are you ever inspired by dreams you've had? Do your sculptures ever appear in them before or after you sculpted them? Um, well, I mean, I've been inspired to create things by things I've dreamed. But I, I usually don't dream about my work that I've already done, no. Ed Bradley asks, are you approached often to sculpt for the resin kit, garage kit hobby? I have been. To be honest, I, during that whole craze, um, I wasn't really that um, available, you know, to do these things. And, um, and I also don't think my quality was clean enough, at the time at least, to... Um, to satisfy the the level of of perfection that that is demanded in that industry, you know. Kyle Daniel wants to know: Will will you bring back the podcast? It was amazing to sculpt too. Um. No, and I'll tell you why. Because I quite literally got to the point where I was 
begging people, begging them, begging them to write in to let me know that people were listening and no one would do it. So I started to feel, well, what am I, what am I wasting my time for? You know, I, I don't, no one, no one is listening. So I stopped, you know. If you were one of the very few who wrote in, I'm sorry. But if you aren't, if you're one of the people that didn't write in, well, you have yourself to blame. Kevin uh, Ganovic wants to know what type of music do you like to listen to while sculpting? Um, I listen to a little bit of everything. Country, pop, new age, electronica, funk, rap, <coughs> a little bit of everything. Let me show you guys something quick. Okay, actually, I'm gonna do this up here. All right, so to do a hand, I start with a little lump of clay like this. I'm gonna cut three wedges in. I'm gonna get the thumb in there. Separate each finger off. Okay, get a little hand. He's there. Blend it in. Hold on, folks. All right. Hopefully, you guys can all see the monster fairly clearly. We can start having some real fun. So, 
obviously, for time's sake, I can only rough in one side tonight. Uh, if you guys want to see me working on it more and maybe even painting it someday, uh, mention it to the Shiflet brothers and we'll see if uh, we can work something out, okay? Unless, of course, you're wildly bored by what I'm doing, which I would understand. Jason LeBlanc wants to know, when you do the fingers, the piece of clay is anatomically the proper size, or do you just eyeball it? Why oh, I eyeball that? Yeah. Deborah Perry wants to know if Siobhan dries by itself. Siobhan does not dry. It stays pliable forever. It's an oil-based clay. So it can't unfortunately do that. Janet Ryo says, I always imagine the people who sculpt very small details must have very small hands to hold small pieces of clay. You seem to have regular size hands. How big are your hands? Let's just say Manos Kitarakis wants to know, so your favorite material is NSB medium for maquettes? I like Sculpey. I sometimes I even use wed clay. I use Chavant. I use all kinds of stuff. Jose Campos wants to know, do you design your creatures while you sculpt or do you draw them in advance? Um, I usually design them as I'm working, yeah. Mitchell McKeon wants to know, can you do a turtle creature next? Why? Why a turtle creature? Oh boy. We are doing a turtle creature. Turtles aren't scary. Cute, but not scary. Cindy DeGraw is asking Is painting the sculpture for a study? But I don't quite understand what she means by that. Uh -huh. If she could elaborate a little bit more. Um, let's see, what else? Faith Chavez says, I noticed you didn't use an armature for the head. Is there a reason why not? Yeah, because I like to sculpt the head separately for detail reasons. Um, and... I like to um I like to have that freedom of doing it separate. Jean Layson asks, do you find you need to use different styles or techniques when you use different clays? Uh sometimes somewhat different techniques, but not certainly not a different style. I one of the big things I'm struggling with in my life is just to, to change my style, and I don't even know if I can, you know? It's so kind of ingrained now. Kevin Beganovic asks, what works best for eyes when doing a character that's small? Um, <clears throat> sometimes I just take Sculpey, and I'll roll tiny little beads and bake them, and that usually does a good job. Santola Mastrandrea asks, when you work with polymer clay, what brand of it do you prefer? 
Sculpey. Kirk Gurley asks, for someone who wants to break into the industry of sculpting but doesn't live near a large production hub like LA, what's a good way to start? Well, I mean, the first thing to do is just start creating. You know, you have to have to just create work and, and show it to as many people as you can. And, uh, you know, someone might hire you to do something. That's The first step is always the work. You know, nothing is going to to come to you without it. So um, start with the work. Start with doing stuff. And, you know, I've, I've discovered some incredible artists on the Shiflet uh, sculpting page, you know. Uh, Vague Sedan, or Sedan Vague, Vag, um, you know, there are just so many artists I've discovered on there. Um, so I, I think that that really, you know, uh, it's a great resource at this point for artists to show what they do and, and, and get attention, um, you know, for what they do. Gina Sandy wants to know what happens when you want to change the posture mid sculpt. How do you adjust the clay? Well, uh, if you want to change the pose ex in an extreme way, uh, that that probably is going to be a problem. Uh, it's usually best to plot out your general pose in advance, um, so that you don't run into that issue. Um, you know, I, I think it's always a good idea to have that kind of already in mind. You know, your your armature is the skeleton, and, and the skeleton has to be quite specific, I would imagine. You know, I wouldn't imagine, I know. It's got to be pretty specific, so. But, I mean, you can do little things, you know. As you can see, I can move it around a little bit. I might, you know, be able to... But, I mean, I use particularly thick armature wire for this guy, so, you know. Janet wants to know if you sometimes struggle with clay that doesn't stick to itself. Uh, very rarely. Um, you know, wed clay can be difficult if it's starting to dry out. But which is a water-based clay. Generally speaking, though, not not a, too much of an issue, though. No. Cindy DeGraw says, uh, trying to understand if painting the raw, non-hardened sculpture is a finished project or is it oh. considered a study, like practice paint for a future sculpt. Um, I usually think of it as a finished piece. You know, once it's painted, I you know I usually only paint things that are really, really finished looking. You know, I, I won't, uh, I won't generally tend to want to paint it unless it's extremely uh, finished looking, you know. Manas Pitarakis wants to know if you're selling full body creature maquettes. Always, you know. Whatever you into, man, we we got that shit, man. We 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 can hook you up, man. We 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 can hook you up, man. What what you what what you what you looking for, man? You you sorry, man. But what 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 you looking for, man? What you looking for? You looking for some um like some cyborg demons, man? You looking for some shit like that? Werewolves? You see some werewolves? We got werewolves, man. We got werewolves by the dozens, man. We got them, them new high octane Frankenstein's too, man. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mark Pelletier wants to know what material did you use for your Black Manta design? What now? Black Manta. He's asking what about what it? What material did you use? Uh, that was Chevant and some cast parts that we did. Larry Ayers wants to know if you think Sculpey changed the game. 
yeah, Sculpey's a, a phenomenal medium. Um, I'd love to work out a deal with Sculpey to try to get their stuff in more because I give it to my students all the time. I, you know, so if anybody knows any Sculpey people out there, man, hook a motherfucker up. You know what I'm saying? Hook a motherfucker up in this piece. Shit. Josh Foreman says, what do you uh -oh. think of the <laughs> creature design in Annihilation? What's Annihilation? I don't even know what that is. Me neither. Is that a game? If it's a game, I don't know, because I don't play games. I'm a man. I don't play little video games, because I'm an adult male. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit. Julia Lynn Powell wants to know if you have any daily practice or exercise you do to improve your skills. Not really. No, I don't. Um, I, uh, I mostly just do what has to be done that day. Um, I don't know. Not really. No. Nothing like that. Kyle Daniel wants to know if you recently dealt with a freelance job that was, you know, horse shit. <laughs> um, well, there are always challenging clients. And there are always people that have very strange ideas. But, uh, to be honest, I haven't had too much major crap lately. No one who was shockingly offensive or anything. You know. Jonathan North wants to know if you ever get sculptor's block, like writer's block, and how do you get yourself out of the funk? I do. The real trick is to just stay away from it for a while. That's usually what happens, you know, just just don't don't mess around with it for a little bit and it'll always come back. Rosaldi is going to ask, being a multi-talented artist, have you tried carving? I haven't really tried carving, no. I, I don't see myself as particularly multi-talented, you know. Just, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't really know that I would be any good at that. Manos Pitarakis asks, what are you doing to get full inspiration to do such great work? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I've just, I, I, I think it's one of those things that I, I can't really point you towards anything that'll make you more imaginative. You know, the real, the real name of the game is the talent lies in the imagination, not in the ability to sculpt. Anybody can sculpt. Anybody can draw. You know, <clears throat> it's what you do with that skill set that separates you artistically. You know, if if you know you're you're an amazing illustrator, but you, you know, it only goes as far as being able to render what you see. Then you're a certain you're you're kind of a limited artist in terms of imagination. Um, and I, I honestly <clears throat> don't think, generally speaking, <clears throat> that what people are attracted to in my work is how beautifully sculpted it is. I think they're more attracted to the imagination. That's really what I think. And, um, you know, that's that's something that just... You, it's, that that part is is sort of a gift. Like you're just sort of given the ability to to see bizarre things that other people can't, um, and sort of visualize these phantasms. But uh, <clears throat> I don't. I don't. I mean, one of my greatest sources of inspiration is just the internet. You know, constantly looking at what other artists are doing and, 
you know, I mean, there, there's so many incredible artists out there, you know, and it just, it's humbling that people like my stuff so much in that, <clears throat> what I think is like an overwhelming crowd of artists that are working and doing things way better than me. I mean, honestly, I'm not being falsely modest. There are artists that just make this stuff look like silly shit, you know? And I'm not kidding, I'm not, you know, and I don't wanna make you feel shitty like, well, if you say that shit, then what the fuck you did me? I'm just saying there are artists that I see that make me feel very small, very small. You know, that have what I think are disturbing gifts, <laughs> you know. Faith Chavez wants to know what kind of Sculpey is your favorite and if you've heard about things about Sculpey 3. Um, Sculpey 3 is just colored super Sculpey, really. It's a little softer. Um, <clears throat> I like I like super Sculpey and Sculpey 3. You know, they're amazing mediums, just incredible. Ed Shut Bradley, that door. Uh -huh. Ed Bradley wants to know if you could get back to redesign any creature from the 80s, what would it be? Redesign any creature from the 80s? Mm -hmm. Um, jeez. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess there is one, um, but I don't, I don't want to insult the artist who did the work, so I, I can't, I don't want to say, but yeah, there's one that comes right to mind when I, when, actually when I think about it, that I think could have been done much, much better. And it's just kind of a shame that it wasn't. But that's for another day. I don't know how it goes. Kyle Daniel wants to know, do you find it frustrating that Sculpey is advertised as a simple medium for making jewelry and not for its character design possibilities? Well, I mean, I think I, I, I think the word is out. You know, I mean, if if housewives want to make, you know little reticulated horse shit to make crap for their daughters, you know, I don't care. Let them, let them live and let live, you know. I, I think uh, for me, um, I'm just glad it exists at all, you know, uh, that such an incredible medium exists. I'm going to start doing the head now. Um, and, you know, I've got the body pretty much blocked in the way I want it, and I'm going to start on a head, okay? So let's sort of see what we can do about making a really, really weird head for this guy. I think I want to put this down because it makes it look a little whimsical, like he's saying, hi, and I don't like that. Cindy DeGraw wants to know if you only offer classes at your studio in California. Uh, well... No, I, I teach all over the world. It really depends where are you and, you know, why don't you let us know that, Cindy. Luke Morgan wants to know if you think you will be back to show us the completed uh, figure. That is entirely up to the shiflets. I mean, I may post it if I, if I keep going on it. I don't know if I will. I don't know if I have the time, to be honest. Were there times where your work was used in a bigger project and you it? Almost every one. My credit got completely stolen on Avatar. I was in some shitty block credit when I was on the project for two years designing that stuff. And some other bastard took all the credit. You know, it's the way Hollywood is. It's why I hate Hollywood and why I hate uh, the people in it. <laughs> you know, it's just a bunch of horse shit. You'll never, ever, if you're a decent human being, you'll never get anywhere. You'll never get anywhere. Because you'll be honest and fair while everyone else is playing a different game. And that's just the way it is. Uh, 
a vague sedan. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing any names wrong. <laughs> it says, uh, class in Ukraine. Uh, if you're really interested, vague, uh, set, set it up, you know. I'd, I'd certainly come to the Ukraine. What time is it? It's 5 10. Okay, we've only got about 50 minutes left. Is the internet connection fine? Live. It's going. I mean, cool. am I offline? No. Yeah, then it's good. Okay, another one. Charles Brian Lucas wants to know, did you submit any designs, etc., for the long in development creature from the Black Lagoon remake? Yes, yes, I've done stuff for a number of different companies for that. Um, I don't know what is so difficult. If they're able to reboot the fucking mummy, I don't know how they are having someone's trouble rebooting the creature from the Black Lagoon. To me, that movie is so, <clears throat> so obvious, like, just make it, you know? Of course, the creature design will be designed by committee, and it will be the main, the person who gets the main credit will probably be a complete piece of shit who the only reason they got the credit was because they were the last asshole to touch it. You know, that that's how this works. Same thing happened to me on a, it was a terrible film, but I worked for months doing maquettes and designs for a movie, but the last fuck face to touch it the last douchebag to put it through the computer and make a few little tweaks got all the credit. So yay, Hollywood. Love it. Jordu, if you're so bitter about Hollywood, why don't you fucking leave? Well, that's a good question. Well, there are a lot of extenuating things that go into that, though. You see, I can't just quote-unquote leave because... This is where my family is now. A lot of my family is now. Uh, this is where I've got a studio established. You know, there are a lot of reasons why. I know, I whine and gvetch and bitch. But uh, there are a lot of reasons why me no can leave. And Deborah Perry wants to know if there's a center inside the head. Uh, no, I'm just sculpting this on a stick of dynamite. No, on this metal tool. I'm going to pop it off now, though, actually. And I'm going to... Sculpture now. Brent Handyside wants to know... Overthinking and overworking can be a problem for some of us. Have you ever had trouble knowing when your piece is done? Trouble deciding when it's done. I, I, I think um, it's all. It's more a question: of, is it is it good enough to satisfy a client? <laughs> uh, for me, you know, I I have I've done it so ma so much that. There's always a very specific um, kind of, I don't know, procedure to sculpture that there's kind of a, a set flow that I follow. Things I, I call a piece done, you know. Hold on, I'm going to change this. Uh, what, what exactly is the question now? What are you doing to create when you cannot create anything? I think that's kind of like the writer block question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think the best trick is to just step away from the work. If, if you're having such a difficult time kind of envisioning something unusual, uh, the best thing is to just sort of step away from it. You know. Faith Chavez wants to know: Is there any folklore, cryptids, or legends that really? Um. But but I mean I find them very interesting. I find it fascinating how 
people create the monsters of lore, why they were created, what what they saw or what they what they uh what they were afraid of that made them come up with these phantasms, you know. Cindy DeGraw asks, if you had to do it over, would you choose the same career path? <laughs> the big question. I don't know. I don't know. Because I really, uh, I really loved acting. And, uh, I went into this stuff. And I really do wonder what my life would have been like if I had pursued acting. I, I, I doubt I would have achieved the amount of success I have as a sculptor. But one never knows, you know, I, I, I do, uh, do think about it often. Tom Kubler says... Tom you... Kubler? Ke Get that motherfucker on here, man. Get him to do a sculpture. This, if you guys don't know who he is, get to his website ASAP. This guy is a fucking master. Mark Newman or any of these motherfuckers. He's like a master of his craft. No shit. He's fucking incredible. I can't believe he's watching. What's up, Tom? Well, but he wants to know... Man, if, fuck you, Tom! If you ever consider doing... For <laughs> sakes, Tom, get out of here! <laughs> you are so shitty at art... You should be funny time all the time. <laughs> Dear George Do. George. No, Tom. Tom's a baller, though. You'll word up to Shiflet Brothers. Get that guy in here to do a demo, man. I'll be on that shit like fucking white on rice. That guy is incredible. I'm very flattered that people like Mark Newman and Steve Hickman, Tom Keebler are watching. And Lord no, I vague sedan. I mean, that guy's a fucking incredible artist, too. So many amazing artists out there. Santola Masandrea wants to know, are you planning to teach a class in Italy? You know, I have been to Italy and I taught a very short, impromptu thing. I would love to come to Italy officially to teach a week-long class. If you're interested in that, please. In Italy is one of the most amazing. That was an honor beyond all belief. The, the, the Renaissance, you know, it's like, these Italian artists are obnoxiously amazing. It's just, you can't even comprehend it. Um, Christian Borsi asks, when you paint it, do you need to prime it? No. You can just go right into it. You really can. Mark Davidson says, Gurgu, if you're serious about getting some deal for Scopi, please message me. I live 35 minutes away, and maybe that could be my foot in the door brokering deal with pros. Huh. Okay. He lives 30 minutes away from who? Sculpey? Uh, he lives in... Or he's 30 minutes away from me. I don't know. Let's see what he answers. Bring my... Oh, I'm on my toolbox. Hold on. <laughs> Hold up, guys. Just get a few tools out. Um, Gene Layson is asking if you ever use monster clay, but uh, you already mentioned waxy for me. Next one. Let's see. I hope you guys are watching what I'm doing and, and getting something out of it. I, I'm always kind of afraid that you're playing around too much and people aren't really getting anything out of it. I, I, you know, let me know if if. There's something specific you want me to talk about, okay? I don't wanna I don't wanna leave you guys feeling like you didn't get anything out of this. Jason LeBlanc is asking, when sculpting big cracks, how do you control the gaps with clay? The best way is to fill the gaps, but to be honest, the best way I've found of dealing with put it in the oven, but to bake it very, very slowly with a heat. That's usually the best way to deal with that problem. 
Manos Pitarakis says, can you show us your tools that you use at this? Wrap up this shit right here, baby. Tian Fan uh, goes into the initial planning of the pose, or do you change your pose to be able to cast a piece uh, midway? No, you don't. You don't think about the casting. You just do the work, and then you figure out how to cast it. You don't. You don't worry too much about the rest of it. Angus Ferguson says, I love the fact that you keep your tools in a shoebox. Best <laughs> comment. <laughs> 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 hey man, I, I, I use whatever's at hand, you know, to keep it all together. You know? <laughs> Not some <problem. laughs> Yeah, no, it's good. It's good stuff. That's good. That's funny shit right there. <laughs> You win the internet for the day, nigga. <laughs> Shit, that was good. All right. Um, I'm going to start slowing down now. Um, sculpture, shall we? So as you can see, the face is still very rough. Everything is very rough. But you can start to see the feel the mood did i drop a network connection you might want to open the door mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah so i'm establishing And you know, all this happened right in front of you. You got to see me working the armature. You got to see the blocking of the figure. I'm even starting to get into some secondary details and forms on some of it. I'll probably work on it or I might have uh, one of my friends finish it off. But um, if you guys have any other questions. Uh, oh, tools. You wanted to see tools. Okay, hold on. Let's move Spider-Man, Spider-Old Man to the side. <coughs> Box of magic, psych. See, it's just a bunch of crap, honestly. It's not some pretentious, no. Um, for larger work, I love this tool. This is a wire wrap rake. I've got a lot of these type things that are just wooden ends with little loop tools and stuff at the end. This is a favorite with the arrow shape at one end and, you know, a chip brush cut cut off for, you know, smoothing stuff sometimes when it's nearing completion. Um, <clears throat> this is one of those things that you can use to get detail on by dragging it across the surface. Stipple sponge smushed into the end of a brass tube. 
yet another one of these type shapes. I mean, it's just, there's so much shit in here. This is one of my favorites. I love this end with this tip. That's so good right there. Um, I've got a bunch of these type of things. I swear to God, this is Matt's. But I don't know. I guess this is not his. I love this tool so much. It's got a loop at one end. Now these are from Kemper Tool. And then I get also some stuff from Sculpture House. <coughs> Matt, are you sure this isn't yours, man? Here comes baller Matt Rose, man. One of the best sculptors ever. Um, no, not mine. You're positive that's not yours. Can I show you for a split second on here? Sorry? Can I show your face for a split second on here? If you want, it's hideous. <laughs> Matt Rose! Genius. <laughs> And an Esquivel, not genius. I kid. It's all kidding. You know how it is. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> here's a nice little rake. This is a really nice, nice rake. Another one that I swear to God is not mine. But I, I like to, in rakes, it's nice to kind of uh, sand down the tooth of it. It's from a saw. Um, kinds of tools in here. But... To be honest, um, when it comes to tools, tools are an extremely personal thing. So um, I could recommend tools forever, and some are going to work for you, and some are not. Um, so it's best, honestly, it's not, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian, you know. So remember that. What, what you use as a tool, if it works for you, then you're doing great. You know, um, I, I you can try out the tools I use, but it doesn't mean you're suddenly going to be Simon Lee. You know what I mean? So, so I think um, it's a matter of of just of the personal thing. You know, tracking down what works best for you, uh, what you like the most, and and sticking with it. I've pretty much been using essentially uh, the same tools now for for thirty years. You know. Um, I mean, once in a while, a new tool comes along that I try, and I'm like, hey, this is really great. But I seem to always return to the same tools over and over. Um, I'll take uh, two more questions, and then I'm going to go, guys. No more questions? Uh, Janet asks, has anyone ever doubted you when you say you sculpted something for a movie, and they thought you were just bragging? Um... Um, well, I mean, I'm not really a braggart type. I, I usually am not comfortable talking about what I do. And I really don't like talking about what I do on movies. So I've never been accused of bragging specifically. Um, and people always believe me when I tell them I worked on stuff, you know. Um, it, because it's not, who cares? It's movie shit. Somebody's got to do it. You know what I mean? Like, it, why would someone lie about having worked on something that they didn't? I know some people that do do that. <clears throat> I am not one of them. Any other question? <laughs> Noelle Ryan says, will you marry me? Who are you? <laughs> Nellie Ryan? Noelle. Oh. Oh. I think I know Noelle, actually. Uh -huh. Noelle with a Y? Guy, I don't know. You never know. <laughs> Kyle Daniel says, uh, "How's your movie going?" Uh, I talked about this earlier, <laughs> but you weren't here yet. Um, well, I mean, it's going very, very, very slowly because I have some really high-end people working on it, in, 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 you know, in terms of music and in terms of visual effects. So, uh, you know, getting them at their availability is the real problem. So I've had to wait for a lot of people. I think it's going to be worth that wait. Whether the people that invested in my Indiegogo campaign agree, it remains to be seen. But I'm very excited about it, and it's going to kick fucking ass, at least to me. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? You make art for yourself, and if other people like it, that's great. And if other people love it, they'll pay for it, which is even greater. But ultimately, you create art for yourself, you know? 
and I'm making this movie because it's something <coughs> I want to do. You know? 50-year-old loser. 51-year-old loser. Manos Pitarakis wants to know what's your favorite creature that you have made? The favorite creature that I have made? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're they're all. I, I it's not like they're children exactly. They're just kind of like. Uh, I don't know. Some things turned out better than others. Some things turned out worse than others. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's, just, that's a tough one to answer. I'm sorry. It's a long winded way of saying. Just saying thank you, thank you. This was awesome. They loved it. More questions. All right, well, let's uh, review the monster one more time, and then I'm going to sign off, okay, guys? Nasty-ass feet, knobby-ass knees. Ew, what's going on? His dookie cracked. Ew, that's nasty. Crusty-ass elbow. Long motherfucking fingers. Big old belly. Look at that head, man. He got a peanut head, yo. <clears throat> so I guess I'm going to continue working on this. Um, I'm going to impart just a few words of wisdom. I watch... Uh, uh, ah, God. Um, the woman who was on not too long before me. Um, oh, God, what is wrong with my brain? This is terrible. It doesn't matter. Um... But uh, I think it's very, very important that when you're creating, um, you are creating what makes you happy, you know, truly happy. Um, I see a lot of artists who are recreating stuff from movies they've seen and from TV shows and things like that, and, um, you know, that's, that, that's cool, but I'm really after what's going on in people's imaginations. That's what interests me the most, um, and I would like to see more of that, generally speaking. Um, so, uh, like I said, create what makes you happy, but also try to come up with the things that are unique to you, the things that scare you or that are interesting to you or that are fascinating to you. Uh, because I feel like that is, uh, that's the essence of art, you know, uh, to use your imagination. Like I said, that's where the talent lies. Okay. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you again, of course, to uh, the Shiflet Brothers for having me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys got some laughs, learned a few things, um, had fun looking at my studio. And uh, if you're really, really interested in me coming back and either finishing this creature <coughs> or uh, how I sacrifice goats in the full moon at the top of the mountain in Sorvento, uh, you can always ask the Shiflet brothers. Okay. Uh, this is Jordi Shell signing off. Bye-bye, guys.